Uh, Dr. Douglas, very good morning to you. Uh, good to have good you with morning, us. Fazir. I, I really don't know what to say after that introduction. <laughs> where, where do you go between toilet paper? <laughs> Where do you go? Well, yes. the best place to go for toilet paper is Skinner Park on, on Calypso Fiesta Day because they usually have a lot of toilet paper with them. Moving right along. Uh, all right. Moving right along. Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> you know, when, when we talk about this whole COVID-19 thing, mm -hmm. and I, I'm glad that before our discussion on air, you, you were able to put it in perspective, and, and we will talk about the social distancing thing mm -hmm. uh, as well. Mm -hmm. But it, it really is... A, 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 an interesting challenge that many of us are facing, not just in mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago, but worldwide, yes. where because commercial activities are gradually shutting down, mm -hmm. more and more people are at home. The children yeah. are at home for mm -hmm. an extended period uh, when they should be in school but, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, some people who are working people are at home. The stresses of maybe no income, depending on certain circumstances and, and, all, and all of that. How, how do you begin that discussion about talking about the challenges, the, the, the benefits, the, the, the pitfalls mm -hmm. of, of a situation like that? Well, you know, Fazir, um, you're so right. You have a situation now where the government has made a call for us to stay at home, and it's a good call. The thing is that now you have all the services that were provided on the macro level you know, now being pressed into a small space called the home. So on the micro level now, you have to, in your home, now work, right? Because remember, people are working from home. You have to provide um, education because the schools are closed, right? You have to now, they... they with the fast food that we like doubles and all this sort right. of thing everything now is provided in the home so you also have health issues being provided in the home and so what has happened is that we have to acknowledge even as we talk about all the issues for our physical health we have to talk about the issues for our mental and emotional well-being and so the family now is under some serious stress to provide all these things that are normally shared um, on the larger level yes and mm -hmm. and, and the, some some might argue well you know this might bring home mm -hmm how mm -hmm. many of the challenges we face in the family circle yes. that we would have not had to deal with because of the normal course of, 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 of daily activities. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to be more of a stressor than the actual COVID-19 worries and so on? Well, I don't know if it might be more, but it might be as much as. Because in our homes, we heard from the Children's Authority um, that we have high incidence of child abuse. We also know that we have opened services for domestic violence. And so we know that the home is not a sanctuary for everybody. And so it can be not, while it might reduce the incidence of COVID-19, it may increase the incidence of violence and abuse. And I think, Fazir, it is not enough for us to just highlight those things. I think it is important that we also provide solutions as well, strategies um, to cope, healthy ways of being as best as we can. And so I hope that is a direction we would also take today. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. And yes. indeed, um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you are the expert. Mm -hmm. I am the, the, the facilitator. So, mm -hmm. so I, I think it's your, 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 your prerogative to take us in the direction <laughs> that you would like to take us uh, this Fazir, morning. you are giving me prerogative. Indeed, indeed. Oh yes. my, this uh, is wonderful but, and I will take it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but because we, we started our, our introduction this morning talking about social distancing. I just yes. want to get your take on that a little bit mm -hmm. uh, as to I mean, it, it appears to be a contradiction in terms, yes. social distancing, as yes. we said in yes. the introdu introduction. Mm -hmm. What do you understand it to mean when we're talking about minimizing the impact of something like COVID-19? Well, you know, as a people, we tend to be very friendly and we touch a lot. 
and you don't realize how much you do that until you're told to stop. So you enter space and people want to greet. Hello, Diane, how are you? Different things. For zero, do people hug you? No. Moving right you along. Don't so you don't have a fence. Yes. So we can use you as an example okay. for yeah. zero right. of what social distancing is about. <laughs> and basically, it really has to do with that proximity to another person, which is as difficult for us as it is about touching your face. Yeah. I heard you talking yes. about that before. And so it means that we keep a certain distance and we learn to interact when we are face to face more with our voice uh, than with our bodies. And so people have been making jokes about, you know, um, using your feet to greet oh, and different things like that, okay. your elbow and so forth. But even with the elbow, that's still too close, true, you, know, you know, as yeah. the case might be. So it is really about making sure that you do not communicate in such a way that you involve touch more than anything else or stand so close that if your you know the vibes from your mouth yes in such That's a way to like you're saying the, the vibes are your mouth. Skip, the snap the whatever <laughs> else it is if you sneeze and cough and so on oh dear lord um, Fazir, bless your heart, bless your heart, yes. And so the thing is that they're trying to make sure that we minimize that, all the hugging, the touch and kissing and so forth. So the thing is that one of the ways we do that is we kind of give ourselves good boundaries to be able to greet people. Um, and also we have a device that we use quite a bit in greeting, which is the phone. Yes. Um, but we also heard that with the phone you have to keep cleaning that phone sanitizing that phone because that is also a receptacle for germs as well yes. and can you actually have social distance in a home setting socially well, well you see the issue is that the home is the place where you are going to congregate and so what they're saying is that whatever that household has that household will deal with because there's not going to be social distancing in the home what they're saying is if you're part of a household if i understand it correctly that is the only place where you can touch that is the only place where but doesn't that mean trans if, if you have COVID 19 yeah so it's okay to give it to your whole family inside the house well, well, well for zero i mean we we move in sub from the sublime to the ridiculous mm. the thing is that they want to if i understand the authorities correctly they want to minimize infection and one way to do it is to confine people to their homes once you are confined in the home, even if you have to take care of those who are elderly and children and so forth, it will involve touch. And that is uh, an excellent strategy because you're saying, let us confine it to only where touch is most essential, which is in the home, you see? Now we have another problem with that though too, Fazi, because our population might increase quite a bit having people confined at home mothers and fathers etc you know <laughs> confined at home you know no that's a reality and you that's a reality you say i'm making jokes but then, but, but, no but that then. is not a joke for no, saying no, no, that no. is a reality yeah, yeah, that all, is that, a reality that's why we had the whole baby we, boomer generation after world war ii yeah so we're saying that the place where touch is confined is at the home before yes. we return to your agenda which you identified for us a, a little while ago just mm -hmm. one final question what do you do with a compulsive hugger? Some people say, oh, but with all this COVID, we'll, we'll get what we had to get, man. You know, I just, I just hug up and think. What do you do with a compulsive hugger? What you do with a compulsive hugger is you behave like Fazir. That's it, you know? All they have to be is like the electric fence like you, you know, cold and distant. You say nobody hugs you, mm -hmm. and therefore they'll get the message. All right. Just think Fazir, mm -hmm. and you'll be able think to think Tiger Wire. You okay. know? <laughs> All right. So th th that's, that's, a, that's a good that's a good way to put it. You really encapsulated it beautifully <laughs> in that sense. But mm -hmm. in all seriousness, let's, let's return to, yes. to to the dialogue and, and the direction you wanted mm -hmm. to take our discussion this morning, as far as the the challenges within the family circle yes. and indeed coping with those challenges. Yes. I think one of the important things is 
we have to have in our mind certain models in order to make the quick adjustment. So one model would be, first of all, we are being called to a certain level of maturity. You see, when you have to move fast, when you have to make quick changes, we might say, don't panic. Um, but I think a better call than don't panic is a call to maturity. So we're saying to the adults in our society, we need to grow up fast. Our country and the countries of the world, we are in crisis and therefore we have to be mature. Now this level of maturity has to be understood in the context that the home is now going to be the hub. The home is going to be the place where we are confined and where we are going to have to exercise leadership. And so the leadership, another model we will think about is, for those who have children, is the structure of the school. And so we know the school is not a hotbed of chaos. Most schools are not. Some schools are, mm. but most schools are not. And the reason for that is that the school follows certain principles. There is a schedule with the school, different subjects at different times, the bell goes, etc. There is a structure. There are clear rules and guidelines. The children know what they're supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do. And so if you are providing leadership in your home with that call to maturity, one of the things you would want to do is to give a structure to the home using the model of the school. And so the structure would be one with a time to wake up, a time to go to bed, supervision of the devices, um, the electronic devices, and we talk about all that in a minute, mm. um, the issue of schoolwork continuing, um, creating a home office if you're at home, etc. But before you do all that, it is important to call a family meeting. Um, and as psychologists, we cannot stress this enough. Don't do it by VAPs. Because when you move by VAPs, you start to cause chaos in your home. So if you're providing leadership, one of the things it's important to do is call that family meeting and roll out to the family the plan and make sure you get buy-in. Also, you have to be clear about what the family rules will be because now you have Washing of hands. I mean, listen now, Fazir, my hands were so sore the other day from just washing, 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 you know. So now you have little children and older ones who are not always the cleanest in the house having to wash their hands. You have the possibility that somebody in the house might get sick. So you need to talk about how they will be quarantined, mm. isolated, and how you will deal with that. So you want to have your family meeting to be able to deal with that. And then you start to roll it out. Just yes. on the family meeting thing, yeah. if you're somebody like me who hates meetings of any kind, for whatever reason, and in fact, because maybe as with, with some families, there's so much hostility and dysfunction, ha having a, a, a meeting might actually be counterproductive. Well, Fazir, you are in a special category, as we know, and we are always amazed that you are loved. There's, there are people who love you and they have you as part of their family. But let us get back to the normal population yeah, for yeah. you. The thing is that this is what I said at the beginning. We are being called to maturity um, and to grow up fast. The meeting that you have, if you are going to lead it, you have to have a process of engagement with your family, if you've never done that before, that would allow them to speak and allow them to be heard as well. So it cannot be that you come with a big stick 
and you kind of beat your family into subjection and everybody's afraid of you and scattering and running. You now have to now have collaboration, even with the authority that you will exercise in the home. And those nuances are not always easy. And you, you know, you're right, Fazir. There are many homes where if you decide to call the family to the meeting, they will say you haven't earned any credibility to tell us anything in the house. And there might be a lot of contention between the father and the mother in the home or the adults in the home because we have our families configured in many different ways where that person may not have earned credibility. And so sometimes in calling the meeting, you have to acknowledge and maybe ask forgiveness for what you have always done and so now we have to make a change and we have to make the change quickly and so we have to be able to come together so this might also be a time of the family dealing with a lot of unfinished business that it may not have attended to before